throughout our lives, we will have many masters. Masters as in teachers. And I don't mean just people, but choices we make as in what will we follow? What is it that will inform us regarding what is important to us in life? It can be a career. It can be a political activity. It can be a person. It can be someone that is quote-unquote beneath us, someone that is above us. But we find our meaning, we find our master in these things because we decide that this is going to be the way I'm going to determine, going to determine how I live. This is my master, this is my teacher. And we've all had many different versions of this. None of us has just gone with the first master and that's been it for life. And there's an illustration in that regarding what the Lord said when it comes to who is your master. And in the world, you have this master, and that's the one you follow. It can be any one of those things I mentioned, or even others I didn't. But just say you have this master, this, this career pursuit, for instance. And one day, you decide you're going to do something else. Or, you may remain in that career, but there's something else that is forming your life. And you still consult, maybe, with that career, with that other passion you had. And you go back and forth. This is a way of showing contempt for one and devotion to the other. But alternately so, you are going back and forth because neither one of them is your real master. And none of them can be. I'm not criticizing people for doing that because I've done it. Literally all of us have done it. We have given our devotion to different things in the world when we see that, oh, this does not benefit me like I thought it did or it no longer does, so I discard it and move on to this other better thing I've discovered. But that goes to the personal nature of our God and the fact that He is one. Because you can only be devoted like that to one person. It won't be one thing or one activity. And it won't be a collective of people. Because as you see in my illustration regarding the different masters we have all had that we form our lives to or by, it is varying. It is diluted. It is, is not a true devotion because it's merely of convenience or for what quote-unquote works. But the requirement the Lord has for us as that individual, as that one who proclaimed that He is the Lord, there is no other, over and over again, literally thousands of times, He told us this for thousands of years before showing up in the flesh as the Lord Jesus Christ, that there there is no way to devote yourself to some collective, some group, some choice you may have because it's just the nature of things you can't help but choose one over the other and kind of kick the other one or ones to the side that's uh, that's the way we were designed we were designed that way and that's why it is so it is so important it is so crucial to find out who your god is because once you find out who your god is and you choose him you have made the most significant choice anyone can make because he can never fail you. He can never lie to you. He, he can never mislead you. But if you think he's someone other than who he is, then you will be misled because it will be your flesh that is informing you about what he or they are saying. Because you either have the wrong individual, you have the wrong group. Specifically, talking about the Trinity, the most common doctrine of men that, that so-called Christians say they believe in. They believe in a collective regarding their God. And it is impossible for you to love them equally. You are not designed that way. You know that because of everything. Even with your own flesh and blood. We want to say we love everyone equally, especially when it comes to our flesh and blood, and especially parents will say this. But we know that's not true. And it's not that you just treat them differently because they are different people. So you cater your actions to them for the individual they are no you actually do love some more than others you do not love them perfectly and and you can't do that any more with your god than you can with them any more in the other examples i gave of a career or or some activity or some political thing you will have varying degrees of love you cannot love different things or people perfectly even so the fact that he is one is the reason why I can love him with all my heart, soul, and strength. But if he's not one, I can't. It's impossible. It would be 
an impossible command. Plus, he would have said, you shall love the Lord's, your God's, with all your heart, soul, and strength. Or you shall love us with all your heart, soul, and strength and mind and all that. But he didn't because he's not a them. He's not a collective. He is one individual. He never said he wasn't. It's just that he said it so many times for so many thousands of years. I think it was it's reasonable for him to expect that we would know by now who he is. And he did make it clear on several occasions. He made it explicit. And yet people will say, no, when he said, if you see me, you see the Father. It doesn't really mean he was saying he was the Father. No, he said he is the Father because he is the Father. Jesus is the answer to the question, what if God the Father became a man? That is who the Son is. The Son is the physical form. Who being the brightness of, what was it? The brightness of his glory and expressed image of his person. Speaking of Jesus, that's who Jesus is. Hebrews 1.3 says that. He was upholding all things by the word of his power. And by himself he purged our sins. This is our one and only God. You can love him with all your heart, soul, and strength. As faulty as it is. Because you can focus all of that and all its weakness and everything on one individual. And that's the only way that's ever going to happen, is when you know that your God is that one individual, Jesus Christ, the one who came here to, to give himself for you in order that he would be able to give himself to you. He gave himself for every single one of us, but he can't give himself to you until you believe that he gave himself for all of us, that you're no better or no worse than anyone else, that you need him and his mercy and his grace and his kindness and his love and his acceptance just as much as anyone else. And when you see that and you see that he gave himself for you and you believe in that one God, that operation of that one God beside whom there is no other that came here to do that, then he can come and live within you and he can give himself to you. But that's, that's my short explanation on the fact that we do only have one master, and he was identifying himself with all these different phrases when he would say these things. And yes, like the short I put up the other day about when you have two masters, you will love one and hate the other. It's a, it's a fact. It's dramatic language. It may not be hate, but he's saying that you will love one as though you hate the other because everyone has their focus on one or the other. Most people focus on Jesus, and they're kind of scared of the Father. And they just completely ignore the Holy Spirit. That's the most common form. But some people, they prioritize the Spirit. They prioritize the, prioritize the Father. But either way, you're hating the one that you are not focusing on because you can't give equal love to more than one person. There's only one person who deserves all of your love from all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your strength. There's only one, and that's Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.